Who's the Biggest Heretic? from fellowshipofthemartyrs.com Biblically, these are the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 Charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, chastity. Please note the things that cannot be used to determine spiritual fruit. There are some obvious things missing from the list. Things like size of ministry, eloquence of speech, number of conferences or revivals they've led, who their dad was, new book deal, associations with other ministries or denominations, longevity in office, political party, number of advanced degrees, physical attractiveness or magnetism, percentage of true versus false doctrine, material wealth, number of people that say they are right, quantity or size of their miracles, visions, dreams, likability by the world, etc. If you have been judging someone based on anything other than the biblical fruit, you might want to say you're sorry and rethink to whom you've been listening. The enemy wants us to focus on all the wrong things. Jesus said that the more you were like him, the more you would be hated and persecuted. So someone with lots of the true fruit is most likely going to be surrounded by a big cloud of controversy and lies. The fact that someone somewhere says that guy is a heretic does not prove that they have bad fruit. The fact that they hang out with prostitutes and tax collectors does not prove that they have bad fruit. The fact that they are not 100% in agreement with your doctrinal opinions does not prove they are a heretic. In fact, if you are sure you're right and they have to agree with you or else they're not part of the body, then you are probably the heretic. Alternatively, the passage immediately before the fruity passage is something that should be considered. Galatians 5.19-21 says, The acts of the sinful nature are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hey, wait a minute. Did he really say factions? like denominations and church splits or heresy, and they won't inherit the kingdom of God? Yep. So anyone that leads a faction is a false teacher? Yep, looks like. But dude, we've got 37,000 factions in the Christian church now. None of them are going to inherit the kingdom? Well, that's what the word says. Read it and weep. No, I, I really mean it. Weep. That's pretty much the only hope we have now. Read Joel 2, 15-17, Ezekiel 9, Ezekiel 34. Or how about this, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. In the last days, men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Wow, that sure sounds like America. Anybody that loves football more than church? Anybody that denies the power of God in us? I wonder if we have any of those people in our churches. Hey, wait. If they are, and we don't turn away from them, then we're the ones that are apostate. Ouch. Or how about this one? 1 Corinthians 5, 9-11. I have written you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral, or the greedy and swindlers, or idolaters. In that case you would have to leave this world. But now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or a slanderer, a drunkard or a swindler. With such a man do not even eat. So if we have a fellowship supper and someone comes who's cheating on their wife or coveting a new big screen TV or has a love of money, we are violating the word of God? Maybe this is just about communion. Well, either way, if we haven't cleansed the temple, we're in violation and are false teachers and heretics. You can't just ignore the parts of the word of God you don't like. Do you have any greedy people in your church? Anyone looking at porn? Anybody cheating on their taxes? Then stop eating with them fellowship supper or communion or whatever the word of God says to throw them out he's not kidding with this stuff are you gonna do it how many would you have left or how about this one first Corinthians 13 1 through 4 brothers I could not address you as spiritual but as worldly mere infants in Christ I gave you milk not solid food for you were not yet ready for it indeed you are still not ready 
you are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere men? Okay, so if we go picking teams and taking the names of men, we're worldly and immature? Seems like. So like if we say we're Calvinists or Lutherans or Mennonites or Warrenites or whatever, then we're worldly? Looks like. James 4.4 4 says, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Ouch! So if we're worldly, we hate God? All I have to do is look like the world and they like me and I'm an enemy of God? Well, he said if you were like him, you'd be hated and persecuted. So if they're not hating and persecuting you, maybe you're friends with them, which means you're an enemy of God. It would really stink to find that out at the sheep and the goats judgment, wouldn't it? I mean, you can say, Lord, Lord, and he will still say he never knew you, and all you had to do was lust after a new SUV or look at porn or fit in with the world. Kind of looks that way. Wow, that's a really high bar. How about this one? You ever told somebody to accept Jesus into their heart as their personal Savior and they'll be saved? Can you find that in the Bible? Because it ain't in there. Nowhere does it say to accept him into your heart, and he never describes himself with the title Savior. He says you must receive him as Lord and Christ, and believe he is who he says he is. That means full-time master, commander, ruler, sovereign, Lord, and king, not one-time fire insurance or lifeguard. If you ever preach Jesus as one-time fire insurance, you're a false teacher and a heretic. Those people are probably going to hell, and it's on your head. Prove me wrong. I'm listening. So what's left? Ephesians 4, 2-6, 29-32 to says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. By the measure you use, you'll be judged. Mercy is best, but it's a really narrow path. Mercy is the only hope that you can stay on it. He's going to have to guide your steps. It's enough to worry about your own walk without trying to shove other people off the narrow path. He's not going to like it if you take your eyes off of him. If you think your theology and doctrine is pure, guess again. That argument is unsustainable. You see through a glass darkly. So does the other guy. Get over it. If you want to be legalistic, then fully obey those passages I quoted above. I have yet to find any congregation that really does. We're all false teachers because none of us are pure. Only Christ is pure. Show mercy. Please. It just comes down to one simple thing. If the Holy Spirit is in you and the Holy Spirit is in me, then we're just one body and that's all there is to it. We're just going to have to figure out how to get along without killing each other. I know people that seem to have gotten through the door and they have a flawed understanding of the Trinity. I know people that are Mormons but that love Jesus with all their heart and it's the right Jesus. I don't know why we should believe they pay attention in church any better than anybody else. They just heard the name of Jesus and fell in love and blanked out on all the stupid Angel Moroni stuff. You don't really know who is a part of the body of Christ and who isn't. But if there's a chance that someone is a son or daughter of the King and a joint heir with Jesus, you might want to be really careful about taking pot shots at them. I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. God spanked me really hard. Please hear me. Don't go telling everybody who is and who isn't a false teacher unless you want to be judged by the same standards. If you're wrong, you're going to be fighting against God and the blood of who knows how many people will be on your head. You better be really, really sure before you pop off and eliminate people from the body of Christ because you can find the slightest little thing you disagree with. They'll know us by our love, not by our doctrinal purity and our robot-like agreement on every issue. Show grace and mercy and love and speak those things which build up the church. Feel free to correct me if you can do it in love. And I think you can. I believe in you. Fellowshipofthemartyrs.com